Good morning, everyone. This is Truby, your certified aromatherapist from New York Institute of Aromatic Studies. And for today, you're up for another episode of Live Well with Aromatherapist Truby Go. So for today, we actually have a special guest, and she is a hypnobirthing teacher. She is a birth and postpartum doula. She is no other than Noelle Pollack. Hi. Hi, Noelle. So it's my first time to ever meet you. I'm so excited for today's session. Okay. <laughs> On the spot. Okay. Well, <laughs> nga kasi I've been I've seen your posts since ever ever since before pa. Since I started I think oiling. I think you started way earlier than me. Yeah, I started as a result of my work as a doula. Mm-hmm. But that's really where it all began. So so I started out as a breastfeeding counselor. That was the first thing that I trained in. And then after a while, we realized that a lot of the breastfeeding issues that we see would start from the birth experience. Something like the first 24 to 40 hours surrounding that period of giving birth. And so that's when um, I was, well, my mentor asked me um, if I would be interested in becoming a doula. And so we trained for that. That was in the birth world, a lot of birth workers know and recognize that during labor, there are essential oils that can help to either encourage more surges or what we know as contractions, if gonare mag stall in labor, or um, just in general help the mom cope better, also help during second stage, which is the stage of pushing or when the baby is being born and during the recovery period. So because of that, I would have to bring oils into the birth space and so I felt like it was necessary that I get trained because I didn't want to get banned from the <laughs> hospital for doing something I had no idea how to do. So that's really how it all began and then para one thing led to another. I'm sure you know the aromatherapy is really like a rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. Like you start learning one thing and then you realize oh there's so much more to learn so para it has never ended but <laughs> it's still continuing until now. Tama. So for those of us who don't know, what do you mean by a doula? Okay, a doula is, well, in the olden times, you always had women who were well-versed or who had the wisdom surrounding birth and, you know, um, recovery and knowing how to take care of babies. And so in our tight-knit communities, ages and ages back, we had these women had this kind of wisdom. So now, I mean, society looks very different. So we have, now doula has evolved to mean a trained professional when it comes to maternal support. So we support um, with information. Um, A lot of times when moms, they go to the hospital, they hear a lot of medical jargon and they're not, they just accept it and they're not really able to make that connection with what that means for them. So we we're kind of like the translator, <laughs> like we help them understand what these things mean and then when they are more informed, they're able to arrive at an informed decision. Um, we also help them physically during labor. Um, we help them with their emotional health. We help them with their mental health during this whole process. So para, you know, they can call us, they can ask us about, they can share with us how they're feeling, you know, and then we're more known to be like in the birth space mismo, but usually the work of a doula starts way before that and continues kind of after that whole process. For some women giving birth, it's just like over in four or five hours. So, but they're still going to need the support after the baby has been born and so on. So is it safe to say that you'd have to have a medical background before you can become a doula or hindi naman? No, you don't need to have a medical background because the role of a doula, of a doula is purely non-medical. But the training um, that we receive for those who are certified doulas, the training that we receive um, teaches us about obstetrics. It's just that, you know, we understand what dilation is, but we don't go in and do the internal exam ourselves, right? So we're not trained to do that. We are not trained to, we're not even supposed to, even if we know how, we're not supposed to like take blood pressure, take vitals, like that's not the job of a doula. There are some women who have, maybe not so much in the Philippines, no, but abroad, you can see women who have transitioned 
from a nurse role, so they're registered nurses, and then they decide that they want to be on the other side of the support system and be doulas instead, or vice versa, you'll have doulas who decide, oh, I want to be a midwife, and so parang may crossing over of roles. But while you're in that space, you kind of stay in your lane. Mm. You know what I mean? You, you do what you're there for. So even if you have all of these other things going on, parang there's a scope, more or less, of, of what your job is. Yeah, because if you're in labor, parang, di ba, parang ang hirap na doctors and medical professionals lang. So it, does it mean that you are parang another friendly face who can support the woman who's in labor? Yeah, um, like for example, the doulas come when the mom says she needs us. So, you know, that can be at any time, you know, that might be look like 5 cm or 4 cm. I mean, if she needs help with coping, then she's going to call her doula. For some, they won't call you in until they're at 8 cm. Now, so it's really different because every woman um, reacts or you know um, has a different experience. Um, but the moment we're there, we don't leave anymore. And the thing is, usually your OB, she'll check on you. Um, and then... After the OB checks on you, she'll go out for a while. Maybe she'll do rounds. No, you're still in the process of your labor. Um, hindi naman siya dyan magbabantay like 24 hours. But we've been known to stay for 24 hours or more. I think it was like my first um, experience. I was in the hospital for 30 hours. And I'm like, wow, this is really a baptism of fire, no? <laughs> first birth ko, lampas na ako sa 24 hour mark. But yeah, it, it's really like that. So that continuity, yung hindi nagbabago-bago yung muka, that kind of helps the mom. Kasi in a very um, unfamiliar space, you have different nurses coming in, medyo hindi na nila alam kung ano yung nangyayari, or, diba? and then different people pa have different personalities. So oh, hindi ko kasundu yung residente na yan. Or itong nurse na to, I like her. This other nurse, hindi ko feel. So... You know, the mom has all of these emotional considerations that we, you know, we look at. Tama. So, how far ago did you start with being a doula? Or which came first? Did you become a doula first before you studied essential oils? Yeah, yeah, I did. So, in 2015, I trained as a doula under Bebomia of Canada together with the other doula of the Pinay Doulas Collect. Did so. Incidentally, I'm part of the first and so far, from what I know, the only doula organization in the country. So right now, there are six of us um, who are still with PDC. Um, and then after that, that's when I started becoming interested, I think, in essential oils around 2016. And then, parang na from there. So right now, um, it's part of... The essential oil aspect is part of my business, but um, I spent like a couple of years not really doing it as a business, but kind of just incorporating it into my practice and then also um, still learning more and still studying and going through that whole uh, crazy training process and studying process that was just insane and continues to be insane. So yeah, so yun siya. Parang kung, I, I used to use essential oils far back, but they were very limited and they weren't really, I wasn't really immersed in that world prior to becoming a doula. Mm, same. I mean, I'm not a doula, but same, diba? Parang back then, essential oils was super limited here. And you know, I know that you were one of the first, I remember, you were one of the first who posted about this international brand of oils. Mm, it was Marihana. Yes, that one. <laughs> yes, that one. So I, I remember you were like one of the first who posted yeah, yeah. about that. <laughs> that was nakakatuwa lang. Kasi parang you kind of get to know people through their posts. Parang ganon. Kasi parang, oh, that's something new. And then I get to search about it too. So parang, in a way, you have influenced me to to get deeper in the, into the rabbit hole. <laughs> Yeah, because I think, ano, barang, I think it was kind of meant to be, because my husband is French, so we know that, you know, the father of our, uh, modern aromatherapy is French, and so we got to this point where we would go on vacations, because we used to go in, on vacation in France every year, and we'd go on vacations, and I'd manipulate the situation <laughs> so that we would 
get an Airbnb that was really close to a distillery or something. So sabi ko, sabi ng husband ko, how many distilleries do you have to see to understand the process? Sabi ko, naman, naiintindihan ko naman siya. It's just that, you know, I, I want to explore like the different ways so you can go to big distilleries, see how the smaller artisanal ones do it, like how do they source their product, what are the soil conditions in that area, that, that kind of geeky part. You're so lucky. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And sorry, Hannah is there. So that was quite easy. I was the other brand I was using before. The other French brand I was using was Avia Sans. And then I quickly realized that I preferred Flory Hana. And then they had like more of a variety. Like uh, they have a very rich variety of of oils. Um, I know you studied with the New York Institute for Aromatic Studies, diba? Right? Yeah. So, and the Taisa chat group, adds the Facebook group na yon. Um, and then, um, there were oils, for example, in the French Aromatherapy course, moving forward, there were some oils that were kind of more rare, like Inula, for example. Diba? Parang that was a little bit rare. Ano, and then parang when they say cystus, okay, where do I get cystus? And I just found that, you know, ah, okay. There's, we have another source. Florihana pala has these um, oils. And parang the more, uh, the rarer carrier oils like calendula, St. John's word, uh, arnica oil for, you know, as a carrier for trauma oil. Yan, parang. So that's why, that's why I used to talk about it. Because I didn't, I didn't know anybody who had trauma oil before. Oh nga, tsaka very unique, right? And it's hard to get from here kasi. So parang even ako, I just want everything from the student's kit para hindi na kamo problema. And I'm very jealous you're so lucky kasi nakapunta ka talaga doon. <laughs> uh, yun. So that was, that was fun and that was really helpful in helping me understand parang what I really wanted to do with my new practice. So how have you incorporated your essential oil practice with your professional um, aspect, like being a doula? Um, well, the thing is, like within the birthing space, I'm not, because I have my own business, right? So within the birthing space, it's not really a business. I kind of have had to compartmentalize like where my uh, essential oil business begins and where my doula work begins. Um, so the idea is, you know, when, we, when I speak with moms, I try to understand what their needs are and then they fill out a sheet for their birth plan and so they give us a list of the things that they would like to have during their experience. Although I'm quite sorry to say that right now we don't have that freedom of movement yet so we haven't been entering hospitals yet because this current situation has um, put on some limitations for doulas but yeah when I was practicing I the idea is the doula should be able to read the room so the mom will not you know I know like she said she wants aromatherapy but aromatherapy is a tool. It's not like the end all be all. So if it's not a need at the moment, I don't bring it out. But if I feel like, okay, um, for example, hindi maganda yung surges na men or the contractions. As a hypnobirthing teacher, because I don't like saying the word contractions, I prefer to say surges. So hindi masyado maganda yung surges or they're not long enough or they're not um, powerful enough. Uh, at this stage of labor, so maybe we'll bring out some clary sage to inhale or, you know, press on certain pressure points that might help depending on, again, like what the situation is. Is the mom doing a water birth? Because if she's doing a water birth, there are some parts of the body that I won't, won't put oil in because you shouldn't be putting oil in any body part that will be submerged into the water because the baby's going to aspirate that. Um, what else? So yeah, but I'm just kind of reading the room and trying to understand what the needs of the mom are. Sometimes things that are working very well, that have been working well in the active stage of labor, when the mom transitions or close na siya to baby being born, she might absolutely detest that oil, which is why I don't advise diffusing in the birth space because if the mom's preference changes, it's very difficult to clear out the air, especially if you're you know in a very enclosed space, like in a hospital room, for instance. Um, also, like when the baby is born, the baby shouldn't be exposed to other stimuli. So we don't like to diffuse, but then we like to use like a, maybe a cotton pad or on, or you know, just something that you can dispose of so that it doesn't affect like 
the baby or you know if the mom wants to change she can change very easily so yeah parang ano lang siya trying to be flexible as possible hmm. and a doula's work is like that a doula has to be flexible and kind of um be perceptive of what's happening so we adjust quickly depending mm-hmm. on the situation and so the practice of aromatherapy in that space is just one of those things that you do mm-hmm. parang kailangan ba niya ng massage sa lower back then you do it ayaw na niya stop you know parang ganun lang you don't hindi mo siya kailangan i-insist na ipagpatuloy the whole time yeah so is it safe to say na parang yung oil practice mo you don't really apply it much kasi limited lang kasi nga merong exposure to young child mas na pa-practice mo siya either before or after nung pagpapanganak mismo yes well the oils can be very very useful during labor but it's just the mode of use like the techniques that you will be using are different and you just have to adjust them depending on what kind of birth this mom is having like again if she's having a water birth or if not um And then we also kind of adjust. Because me, I, I gave birth to my baby girl seven months ago, um, and the oils were super, super useful. And para si ko gosh, para in my own experience, na pag sama sama ko lahat, like the the hypnobirth, the essential oils, para na pag merge ko siya in my own birth. So now that I also have my own experience using the oils for my birth, para nakikita ko na. Ah, okay. So this is what was happening during the experience of my clients. Also, it just makes even more sense now. Um, and then, yeah, parang after, you know, we also teach moms how to use oil safely even after they've given birth because moms have their own needs. But at the same time, you have a baby, you're breastfeeding. What does that look like for you? Um, where should you be applying the oils, for instance? Because Um, I know, like Tisserand has his dosages for newborns. Di ba meron zero to three sa kanyang dilution chart? And but even so, even if there are uh, safe dosages for for newborn infants, I also like tell moms this is maybe not the right time because you know what is again what is your objective? So we teach them how to use oils and when it's safe to introduce oils to their babies. And so on, and how, and what the dilution should be, etc. So, parang yung buong cycle. <laughs> oh, nga ang galeng. So it's, it's quite useful. So, what do you mean by hypnobirthing, teacher? Ah, okay. So hypnobirthing. I know, like some people, when they talk about hypnosis, they're kind of um, there's a misconception where they think that it means you're allowing somebody else to take over your mind. Mm-hmm. But actually, hypnosis doesn't work that way. Um, with hypnosis, it is the person taking charge of their mind and then strengthening that ability so that there is a systematic release of fear and anxiety surrounding the birth. So, for example, um, parang I have a very negative view of birth because of what I've seen in the media, because of birth stories that I've heard. So the tendency is, um, it's stuck in my mind. These ideas are stuck in my mind. They will cause me to be nervous and to be tense during my own labor. And because of that, I will experience pain more intensely and I will suffer. Now, that's one scenario. So what, and that's a lot. That's the scenario for many, many women. No? But what hypnobirth does is it allows you to reframe those ideas so that you are not tense. You are going into the situation without fear. And so, yung idea mo na dapat may pain. Actually, pwede mo lang pain. It can just be pressure. It can just be a sensation. But yon. If, if you're able to employ hypnobirth techniques such as visualization, the kind of breathing that we teach, you can go through that whole experience without necessarily feeling pain. You may or you may not. Kumbaga. And if and if you do, perhaps the level of pain that you feel will be at a four compared to the nine if you mm-hmm. had not done the techniques. Mm-hmm. So it just makes everything more um, bearable. Sabi nga namin, um, You know, pain is different from suffering. Suffering is the inability to cope. So, you know, like when you work out, you run, your muscles feel sore. Pero di ba sarap? Or when you do yoga, 
may konting discomfort, pero ang sarap, no? You feel like, ay, nagtrabaho yung katawan ko. So, I mean, why not look at the sensations of labor in a similar manner na, oh, this sensation, this is necessary for my baby to be, be born. So, I'm not going to look at it like I have to be afraid of it or I'm gonna tense up or I'm gonna freak out or I'm gonna panic. So, yun. So, it can be a very, very peaceful experience for the mom. It's like mind conditioning, kung baga. Yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. Kind of like that. Um, some people, they have very negative reactions to certain words. Parang they hear that word automatically, they, you know, tense up. Some people have that, so we're very mindful of their words. That's why earlier I said, I don't like the word contraction. contraction. Because it has so many consonants. It's so parang contraction. Ganyan, it's so matigas. But if you say surge, you are thinking of it as a wave. Mm-hmm. Um, si Giselle Bunchen, I think it was her. She was the one who, when she was in labor daw, she was imagining, pag paparating yung big wave, wave ng surf, you know, hindi mo siya kaya labanan. So what you do is you go under. Mm-hmm. And that visualization is very helpful. So that's one thing Michelle Bunch and I have in common. I think that's the only thing we have in common. Wow. I used that visualization and it was very, very helpful for me. So my three children have all been birthed without any medication, but it was with the last two, with the two younger ones that I was able to do hypnobirth and it was really a game changer. So yun, with the use of the oils, actually, you can find ways to use the oils. Kasi, di ba, we know that the oils um, target the limbic system or our emotional brain. Mm-hmm. So, yun, parang that whole combination just makes so much sense during that, that crazy period, that vulnerable period. In your personal experience while giving birth, ano yung mga oils that were the best used for you? Mm-hmm. When I gave birth, um, kasi ang nangyari was Monday I went to um, my appointment to my checkup and I was uh, like 5 4 to 5 centimeters dilated 80% effaced so ibig sabihin na manipis na yung cervix and so my doctor was saying oh, admit na kita but sabi ko no I'll get stuff at home and then I'll come back tapang <laughs> tumigil naman so I'm like Oh, so I'm like, Doc, okay na. Parang hindi, okay pa, tumigil naman eh. So let's not go now. Let's just wait. Sabi niya, sure ka ha. Ito, oh, sige, okay lang yan. And then Tuesday came and went, and then nothing. But I told my doctor already, okay, Doc, tomorrow is the day. Even if wala akong mag-feel, I'm gonna go to you and let's do another checkup. So I think it was like late afternoon of when. Day, I decided today is the day. <laughs> no, I ran and I, I could feel it that it was going to happen. Now. So I put one drop of rose and one drop of frankincense on the top of my head, but not for any like very specific reason. But Dubai, you have the queen of oils and the king of oils. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know if I was going to have a girl or a boy because it was a surprise. So I said, let's just kind of anoint ourselves <laughs> with, you know, whatever it is. And then after this i'll feel like really ready to go but during the so when i got there i was like 8 cm na and then fully effaced and then but i'm slightly mataas pa. so the duel is like we know some exercises to help baby descend mm-hmm. but when baby for baby to really be able to position and to descend dapat may surges pa rin eh. and mine were kind of mahina so i used clary sage and rose during this time wow ang galing um, I didn't go in tamad. I didn't even put it in a cotton. I just got the bottle and Sniff I na lang. <laughs> during the exercise, nakatasok na ako pa. Ini inhale ko na. Tapos ako, okay, sige, wag na tayo mag cotton pads. Ito na to. <laughs> Whatever, no? And then after that, then I felt the surges start to improve. And then after my round of exercises, I went to the toilet for a while. And then when I came out, I just told my doula, call the doctor. Uh, the baby's coming in. I didn't know. And then, you know, and then my baby girl was born like maybe 10 minutes from that point on. So, sabi ko, yes, nagamit ko siya. Oh, ma parang walang hirap. Tapos nagamit ko siya. Uh-uh. I'm so jealous. <laughs> I, I've always been afraid of that thought of giving birth and getting pregnant and everything about it. Ayan. So, the hypnobirth will help you. <laughs> Kasi you have to identify where are all of those fears coming from. At saka, yun nga, parang how can you face them and then kind of just let them go. 
Alright, so um, Noel, how far ago have you finished your course? Because diba, you said you also studied from York Institute. Yeah, so uh, here's the thing, diba? Did you notice that they did like this whole course parang rehash? Or no, 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 they changed the programming. Because I was enrolled in French aromatherapy, right? So we foundations, ganyan, no? And then foundations has like, what, five case studies now, right? And then there's French aromatherapy after with more case studies, correct? But it took me so long because at the same time, I also took courses from the Tisserand Institute. So I finished um, essential oil safety and then the series there now, essential oil chemistry. And then they introduced another one, which is molecular dynamics. And the teacher there is Joy Bowles. She's even like, she's the Aussie lady in the documentary Unwell. Uh-huh. If you watch that. So she's the chemistry teacher for the Tisserand Institute. So yeah. So I finished that and I was taking a separate course for pregnancy and oh, ma. childbirth and then also a, like a separate one for um, pediatric massage. because mm-hmm. Not because I want to be a massage therapist, but I just felt like you need to understand what the needs of children are before you can kind of recommend to parents. So patong patong sila. And then, ang nangyari was, French aromatherapy was revised, I think, because they came out with aromatic medicine, and then there was a prereq that you had to finish the anatomy course. So, now, now I'm not yet done with aromatic medicine because the the anatomy and physiology course caught me off board. Like, like it caught, it, it ano, parang kind of na-discarrel ako because ah, I have to go back and take that pa pala. And I was already taking another physiology course with Coursera. So parang, so ilan kayo? <laughs> so ilan ba dapat? No, so yeah. So I'm not yet done with uh, aromatic medicine. Oh, wait. So you took up also aromatic medicine. Because FA, French aromatherapy, is still different from aromatic medicine. Yeah, pero kasi, the, diba, the dif- parang FA focuses so on the internal use of oils. Diba? Yes. Parang there's that whole Correct. area of discussion, right? But, parang, and I was comparing programs, the more complete one, so you still have, I still have the option to finish FA. What I did was I switched over, kasi parang for me, the more complete one was the aromatic medicine, kasi nga, it included the anatomy and Correct. physiology track. Correct. No? So, yun. So, parang medyo masokista lang ako sa night, kasi parang, ba't mo yung ginawa? Hindi, oh sobra. <laughs> Intense. <laughs> But as if they also have a separate, oh, di ba, they also have a separate aromatic scholars program. <laughs> oh, oh, ayaw ko na nun. <laughs> Sige, dito na lang ako. Kasi, oh, it just feels like more in line with what I'm trying yeah. to do. At saka also more in line with what the company I'm connected with is also doing. Kasi, um, so I'm a wellness advocate for doTERRA. And doTERRA also uh, recently launched, well, not so recently, so we finished it already, the essential oil certification, a specialist certification course. It doesn't um, qualify you to be an aromatherapist, but it allows you to understand. And the chemistry portion was really quite um, extensive. So that was mm. really good. Um, to understand how to use the oils and how to make sound decisions. So parang that made more sense kasi nga parang doTERRA was moving towards the medical applications of the essential oils and so the aromatic medicine program kind of parang tama it was the right decision to go that route kasi ano siya parang it's the same oh, um, direction and then yeah so that's it <laughs> Oh nga actually ako after ko yung module sa chemistry sabi ko yes <laughs> <laughs> Yes. It was surprisingly easier than I had <laughs> anticipated. Kasi, like, kung may trauma ka sa chem nung high school or college or whatever, parang mas stress ka ng very slack. And I realized, oh, we don't have that much math aside from yung chemistry course kasi under the Tisserand Institute. Like, okay, you talk about how many electrons are in the first orbital in the second orbital right that's pretty much all the math you've got to do it's not so stressful or for the parang formulations course parang that's as much math as you're gonna have to do so actually i'm i was afraid for nothing hindi naman pala siya ganun ka nakakatakot because <laughs> when you're really like interested in it like tuloy-tuloy lang oh nga pero grabe intense yan you're taking courses left and right 
Sana pwede mo na lang silang ipa-credit with each other. <laughs> Minsan kasi, di ba, like for example, I before I decided on New York Institute, I was looking at the program of Aroma Head. So I took pa- parang kind of like the introductory class of Andrea Boje. Di ba, parang she has kind of like similar to the free course of um, aromatic studies, di ba? Pero parang, ano din siya eh, magkocompare ka nung kung sino yung or which approach kind of resonates with you more or which approach you want to learn more about. So yun, kaya siya, ano, parang madami kang ititake up later on kasi ma-realize mo, ah, okay, so understanding the chemistry will help me make better decisions. So let's really understand the chemistry. That's why I decided this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to kind of get a better understanding of the whole picture. Di ba parang if you just look online, we only see a very, very small picture part of what aromatherapy is and what the uh, um, potential is for for healthcare. So, yan. So, sige, wag pa ka masokista ka. Oo oh, nga, ang galing. Ako naman, what I did was, after yung level 1, FA, tapos nag-beauty ako. Nag-enroll ako sa beauty uh, formulations. Mm, okay. Yan. Yan naman yung hindi ko masyadong area. Like, when there are people I know who study about, you know, using essential oils for, I know, for formulations, for skincare, ganyan. Yan naman, I like to listen to that kasi I haven't really uh, studied that in depth. Mas ano ko. <laughs> Oo nga, which is good kasi I think so, you're the only one na alam kong super intense yung training with um, pregnancy, breastfeeding, um, especially supporting women in their childbirth. I think you're the only one here in the Philippines. Oh, I'm sure there will be more. I'm glad that there is more um, consciousness towards this. It feels like we are turning to going back to natural things, being more mindful of our health. I guess, especially like with this current health situation that we're facing, para people are trying to reassess their life choices. Oh, yeah. So, parang ako, inisip ko, nako, nung kabataan ko, ba't ba ako nagwalwal ng ganyan? Kawawa naman yung atay ko. Ano ko ba, bata ka pa? Kaya, <laughs> to, ano, support my liver health, mga ganyan. <laughs> Malapit na ako mag-40, so, <laughs> medyo... Huwag mong i-announce, ba? walang may alam. <laughs> Na lang guys, 35. Okay na yun. <laughs> Ako nga, I stopped at 16 eh. <laughs> wow. Okay. Parang delikado yun. Baka sabihin ni Norma din yung dance. Alright, going back. Kasi you mentioned that you also have a background in French aromatherapy. What's your stand on ingestion and have you tried it? Yeah, well, I, I do take essential oils internally. I feel like um, the fear around ingestion is very, it's not very well founded. I know like Dr. Joy Bowles says a lot, um, the, the chemist niya, no? she says a lot like we're embarking on such a huge human experiment on the use of oils internally. But the, I think what that refers to more is ano eh, um, yung large dosing. I feel like anything can be a poison if the dose is not right. Even water can be a poison if the dose is bad. And the thing is, we have evolved at the same time as these plants have evolved. So human beings have had a very, very long history with the use of plant life for their health. And so something like, for example, very, very simple. I know a lot of people do like lemon water, right? And some people are so scared to put lemon in their water because it can go through styrofoam. Okay, and that kind of, that looks like a, a sound, uh, I don't know, like argument. But at the same time, you have to understand the human body is not styrofoam. So we have hydrochloric acid in our stomach, you know, in our gastric juices. These are quite powerful for metabolism. And the thing is, when you um, think about it, if you eat marmalade, if you eat like orange marmalade, you are also ingesting essential oils because they use the rind. You know, you eat the rind of the citrus fruit, or you, if you drink limoncello, you are using, you know, the rind. Because to make limoncello, they use the rind, they don't use the juice itself. So it's really kind of like that. When I went to France, though, I noticed that when they put, when they use lavender oil internally, or peppermint oil, or what have you, 
they don't normally put it directly into water like that, but I noticed that they would put it into like a sugar syrup. So they drop the essential oil into a sugar syrup or into something like honey. I think that serves as a way to disperse it more effectively because water and oil don't mix. It's not like it's not going to parang hindi siya exactly like a perfect soluble no yung ganun. Yeah. Pero it's still a better way of dispersing the oil. So if you're using one drop, it's fine. So I did talk to Dr. Joy, but I, I, we were, we're on Facebook, we have this group for the medicine balls that are given in sa um, French aromatherapy slash um, aromatic medicine course. And when she looked at the dosages, she said, well, that sounds reasonable. So I think like the fear now is really around, you know, Pinterest, recipes for sobra sobrang dami like i don't know five drops or ten drops of oil like in one go which i feel is just an overkill if you consider that these plants are well these oils are really potent i mean they take so many plants to either cold press or to distill these these oils so 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 for me it's not I'm not in on any end of the spectrum. Parang, I like to say somewhere in between where you know why you're using it. Because you don't just use it for nothing. Kasi feel mo lang. And I really found certain essential oils to be super helpful in supporting my own concerns. So for me, um, I use copaiba internally for my ngalay and my nerve health. Mm. And frankincense for anxiety. I think those are the ones that are parang tumatak sa akin because I've really been able to use them with good results. But I don't think I ever take more than one or two drops at one go. So whenever you're taking it internally, what do you do? Do you put it in a capsule? Do you put it in a dispersing agent? Mm, okay. So for example, if it's something like well, because doTERRA now has the peppermint bead, let's say, it's available now in the Philippines. So they come in these little micro capsules that look kind of like caviar. So they're that small. And each micro bead has maybe one-fourth of a drop of essential oil in it. So I know some people like to use that for their digestion. They also have, but it's in the States, it's not yet here. They also have the peppermint oil in the enteric coated capsules. So if it's an enteric coated capsule, it is not going to be affected by the acidic environment of the stomach, but it's going to reach your colon. So that's for people who have irritable bowel syndrome, etc. So for me, it depends. Um, like for example, if it's nerve health, I, I would either take it in a capsule. So I always have like these. I have my veggie caps Aww. all the time. Um, or if it's for something like... I don't know, like respiratory issue. I've tried it in the medicine balls. Right? There, there are recipes for the medicine balls in the French aromatherapy mm-hmm. track. So I've tried doing that. That's been helpful. Pero parang matrabaho kasi magmimix ka ng coconut flour. <laughs> <laughs> no dry time and then in Asia ganyan yun just ko yun talaga feel na feel ko ning pagka witch doctor ko na witchy witch no witch talaga ako nga dream ko gusto ko may still ako dito eh <laughs> <laughs> at saka meron di ba for gummies I've not tried doing the gummies I've yet, tried it kasi sobra akong nuknukan <laughs> so <laughs> yun um, but for the frankincense for it for really like cases of high anxiety when like it's for um, parang first aid, kumbaga, before it gets to a level of anxiety that's debilitating, especially because I am, I was, now I'm, have my baby seven months old now, but initially yung nafeel ko na, yung anxiety rising, and I have a history of postpartum anxiety with the first two births, especially with the first child. So, um, frankincense on the roof of my mouth, just a dab, not even a drop, just kind of one dab, and then derecho. And then within seconds, I'm just like, okay, okay, I can function. I'm still stressed out, but I'm at a point where I can function properly. So, yun. yun. So, ano siya, parang just knowing how to use them and when to use them so that they're effective and you're not overdoing it, I think is key to benefiting from from the internal use of oils. Yeah, and I think kasi with your background and 
with the extensiveness of your studies, I think you're capable naman of doing ingestion. Because it's, it's just a danger for everyone who's listening. It's just a danger if you don't know really what you're doing, or if you just got your recipe from Pinterest, or if you've got your recipe or the idea from someone uh, who's not qualified, di ba? Yun lang naman yung danger dun. But I think yeah. naman, you're very, very qualified. I mean... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I feel like also, if you're confident and you know where your oils are coming from, because like I'm sure you've tried smelling a whole variety of oils of different brands, and parang, there are some times when I just smell and I'm like, nope. Yeah. You know, there's something off. And so, like, if you really can't find a way to, you know, at the very least, access GCMS test results, I mean, that's, I think that's super basic, being able to access the GCMS. I mean, the GCMS doesn't tell you the whole story, but... It's a good benchmark. It. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, so that, that's, that's one consideration I have before I take anything. Oh, I see. All right, so aside from doTERRA, what other oils have you tried? Or did you start with doTERRA in the first place? No, I've gone through, I don't know like anymore how many brands I had at one time, especially when I was starting out with the foundations course because like you were being encouraged to like, try them all. So okay, no, no, okay, let's try them all. So um, there are a number of European brands that I tried. I can't recall some of them anymore because they have like four. A lot. Super. Days, but I know I've done Abia Sans, I've tried Florihana, yeah, I've tried Plant Therapy, Eden's Garden, Young Living, and I've tried like several different brands, um, or Acacia, for example. Some of the brands that I've, I haven't really tried like purchasing them, like I'd go somewhere and then they'd be for sale and then I just sample mm. and I make a decision as to, mm, do I really want to add this? Because I've got like a lot going on already. Maybe not. <laughs> so yeah. Actually, uh, before like when I made up, Papa Sabay, you know, in, in the group, you know, I just say, okay, let's let's see, let's try. And then yon, after some time, I kind of figured, okay, na, I, I know what my objectives are for using oils, and I can really streamline. I don't have to use every oil that's in the world. There's a whole like big world, and it's nice to explore. But I also found myself when I had so many of those different oils, para. You know, I'm not gonna use them all. They're gonna go to waste, and these are valuable things. <laughs> like they come, they're very concentrated plant material. So I just felt like, okay, I have to streamline my closet enough na magkupon mani na ako ng oils ko. So yon. The two oils that I still keep are DoTerra and Florihanka. Oh, I think it's so interesting to check out or take a peek of your essential oil collection. Parang ang fun. Parang ang fun magbakasyon jan. <laughs> Ay, pero konti, ay, madami siyang, madami from the two brands, but from the rest, I don't know if it was in Essential Oils PH, or I don't know which group it was, na parang nagpa, like, I took, like, a whole bunch of oils from different brands, and I said, okay, buy all for this amount. Like, oh! <laughs> Hindi ko naabutan yun. Walang magyayari sa kanila dito. Mag-oxidize na lang yung mga citruses dyan. At Correct. Okay, so let's be candid, Noel. Ano sa mga brand na yan na hindi mo nare-recommend? The one that I don't recommend. Huwag na. <laughs> so, Oo, oh, hindi na. Ano na lang siya. Parang, what I do recommend na lang. For the oils that Dokera has, I use Dokera. But for the oils that Dokera doesn't have yet, I use Florihana. Hmm. So, there are some things like, di ba, ilang-ilang, there are several, ano, of ilang ilang one two three four and then the complete and then or yeah, yeah one two three and one then two three and complete. So what I do is if somebody's looking for like the fractionated ones like the two or whatever. Although, parang I also distashed some of those already because I'm like you know what <laughs> I don't really need so many ilang ilang in my life. No, so parang so many bottles of ilang ilang in my life. So parang medyo ni let go ko na siya. And then I keep like those na lang na have very real use to me like I'll st- I still have one Palma Rosa from another brand I still have one Inula or I have like a Rose Absolute I think I, yeah I have a Rose Absolute pa of Florihana but I also have the essential oil not the Absolute from the Terra so ganyan 
Mm. Like I just maybe keep one of each. Oh, nga, that's a smart way to maintain but, your know, oils. When people ask me about, ano, I, I just just be, ano, just be able to demand for test results. Be able to demand for transparency in in third party testing. Parang for me, that's just kind of my thing. Yeah, that's true. I agree. So for your family, for your home, how have you applied essential oils naman for your kid, for your home? Okay. So my kids, they're very good at it na. My boys, Mukha like, nga. like for example, my older boy, he has G6PD deficiency. So he knows better than to use peppermint inside his mask. Mm. On the filter of his mask, like he doesn't do that because he knows. Um, and then the younger boy like he doesn't so he he's free for all they know what to do in case they spill an oil on their hands so there's always fractionated coconut oil because they know you don't wash your hands if you spill it on your hands um the non the oils that are absolutely like hands off for children like birch winter green you know i they're not within sight my children don't know where they are no because i just don't want to leave them lying around um so that's it so my younger boy, he knows now, He there's this blend called Balance, and there's another blend called Adaptive. These are both like grounding and very calming blends. So he'll put it in the filter of his mask because he knows that you know, he can breathe better. And also at the same time, he won't feel so wired because kids now, they're, you know, parang kulong sila eh, or they can go down sa park, but they're still very limited movement. So they get really anxious and antsy. So for them that's been helpful or when they're already having tantrums i've been learning how to calm myself down and not join in in the tantrum oh. <laughs> so i would say something like do you want to come over and have a massage is a massage going to help you so when normally they say yes they're happy to get a massage and so they they enjoy that my husband the man he likes um this blend called Deep Blue because he has really bad cramps. He's I love that too. Like, like, yeah, I'm more like, like this. Right? I'm like, no, no, so and I, So he's, I know, I think like really tall people have circulation problems because, you know, parang ang layo nung inihikot ng dugo sa nila. Or that's, parang theory ko lang. Um, so yeah, so he, there are certain blends that he likes for his cramps. He also has his own essential oil table in the office. So he asked me to set it up. So I put there a diffuser in his office and then like a collection of oils and then some oils for just helping to cleanse the air because he has to go back to the office and everybody's planning these days with you know the whole COVID situation. So he also knows the dosing, like when he needs to take certain oils internally. So alam na niya. That day, like I had to make it for him but now since it's in his office like he'll have there like a jar of honey and he'll have like the appropriate oil beside it so that he knows if he's feeling like a scratchy throat or whatever he can just make his own concoction so yeah well trained na yan. <laughs> he's been with me to the distillery so he knows how to use the oil so he's like i he can identify lavender and lavender by looking at the plant wow so, okay <laughs> At which outfit should it be grown for it to have good therapeutic benefits? Alam niya yung sagot sa mga tanong niya. So, magaling na sila dito. They're all very empowered. So, yeah. Do you have pets also at home? So, kunwari, iwanan ko sila dyan. Alam nila yung gagawin nila. No, we can't with the kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, oh, uh, Because the, the, we once tried to rescue a cat because I love cats, but... Tapos naawa ako, may nakita ako sa kalsada. Tapos, naharash siya ng kids. Tinakuha niya kami, nag-escape siya kasi hindi na niya matake yung mga anak ko. So, oh. nakita ko siya somewhere dyan sa labas. <laughs> Ayaw na niya sa amin. You love cats? I have 55 of them here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Yun. So, Lahat sila I, rescued. Yeah, it also places some limitations as to what you can do. So, Very limited. <laughs> Kasi ang dami nila. Siguro kung isa lang, may space siya doon na hindi siya masyadong ma-expose. Correct. Pero sobrang dami nila. Ako na lang yung sustay doon. <laughs> oh, mag-inhaler ka na lang. Pumuha ka na lang na. Meron ako niyan. <laughs> Sarili lang. <laughs> Passive diffuser. <laughs> 
I'm in the shower. Diba? There are some diffusers now that are for the shower. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Actually. Siguro sila na the shower with no. you. No. <laughs> Actually, yun. I can only diffuse in my bathroom. That's my safe place. Kasi yung bathroom namin, meron din yung exhaust palabas. So, it's like the safest place. Okay, yun. <laughs> ah, thank you. I want a cat. You can come over here and play with them. <laughs> I used to have a Persian. Oh! Meron akong isang Persian and her family. They were rescued from Qatar. So, street cats sila sa Qatar. Then, they were flown here. What? Oh my God. Isang buong pamilya yun. Apat na anak. Pero rescue lahat. So, may Persian ka, tapos sa Qatar siya rescue. Medyo mas malapit siya niya base of origin. Ganun ba yun? <laughs> Oo. Tsaka... Ang nice niya, pero street cat lang siya doon. Yun ang mind-blowing doon. Ako, what? Street cat yan? Akin na. Dito na yan. <laughs> By the way, before we forget, the winner for last week's giveaway is Erika Kerihero. Thank you so much for joining and congratulations. So we don't have pets, so we're not as limited with our diffusion options. Although, parang I find that I'm also a little bit lazy when it comes to diffusing during the day. Normally, most of the diffusion happens um, in the unit where we homeschool, mm -hmm. um, just to help us keep calm and focused and then in the bedroom. And then the helpers also know how to use oils. So our helper, um, when she has like a stomach ache, she has free access to whatever we have. So she just takes what she needs. Baka upong niya dyan habang nagka-klase ako, alam niya yung gagawin niya. Ang galing. So, yun. And we just let them enjoy it. Kasi, you know, yeah, their health is also important to us. Of course, they're part of the household and they take care of our children. So, it's good that they know what to do. Um, yun. And like, when I'm not here and the kids are feeling something, they're like, can I use this? Mm -hmm. Kasi parang nagkaroon siya ng paper cut or nagkaroon ng splinter. And then they're like, oh, ito yung ginamit ko, ma'am. Ah! Very good, Ganan. <laughs> Adam na nila. Because yeah. they have boys, eh? so they're always getting into some kind of whatever. <laughs> sugat sugat. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, Noel, you mentioned earlier that one of your kids has G6PD. For our listeners who don't know what's G6PD, can you tell us more about it and what's the condition about? Okay, G6PD deficiency, it's a condition that children are born with. And then you can find that you can find out if your kid has it through the newborn screening test. So now, all of the babies after they're born, they go through a, um, their heel is pricked, they get a blood sample, and they test for like something like 25 different possible conditions. Um, and a lot of those conditions, if you can address them quickly, you can prevent a lot of major issues. But the difference with G6PD deficiency is that it's not normally, especially for Filipinos, such a huge cause for concern. Um, children who have G6PD deficiency um, have this kind of metabolic issue wherein they are not able to metabolize very well. So if they're exposed or ground nuts, um, they could have a, what we call a hemolytic crisis, which means they get like anemia and then the first way that you know is parang namutla, even the lips, they look like paper white. Okay, um, normally it manifests itself more in boys. The mothers are have the gene for it, but women don't normally um, exhibit signs. And so the boys, yan, kaya parang it's a cause for concern. So one of the things that is contraindicated in children with G6ED deficiency is peppermint. So like, but the thing is, again, it doesn't mean that they can't use peppermint toothpaste forever. I think it's also um, dependent on the dose because, you know, G6ED deficiency happens to like 10% of our population and most of us eat mongo, you know, or whatever, like beans and all of these products. A lot of our kids eat that without any second thought and they don't really get sick. No, but it's still worth um, taking extra precautions. So peppermint is one of those things that are contraindicated. Um, my son has been exposed to a very small amount of like dilutions of peppermint with no issues. And the thing is normally, it's not something that accumulates. According to our pediatrician, it's something that you can see right away. Like if this kind of food has had an effect, this kind of medication has had an effect, and so on. So, you know, man, but then he's not taking any of this internally. You know, he's not taking peppermint internally, mm -hmm. for example. 
Um, if there's diffusion going on, like it's quite far from him, um, like it's not on his face. In the first place, guys, don't put peppermint on the face. No installation, don't use it near the face of children, and so on. So, in a man, it's not really. I prefer not to be an alarmist. I'm the kind of parent na para ng sobra relax. My children are, you know, crawling all over the grass and whatever. Sobrang dugyot. <laughs> I, I don't like to be like super helicopter parent. Ganyan, and praying about everything. So, meron ng ganyan. Na parang, okay, if it's with him, just make sure he doesn't have too much exposure to peppermint. But otherwise, yeah, with the other oils, he's free to use them as he needs. Oh, I see. It's parang easy to manage lang pala. But are there oils to help him? Wala naman, di ba? With no, that issue. It's, ano, eh? it's a metabolic issue. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Now, I know they're studying how certain essential oils in the realm now of epigenetics, which mm-hmm. is really showing us na uh, you can turn on and turn off certain genes. Like, you can't change your DNA. You can't yeah. change your genes. But through your environmental exposure, your diet, diba, you're able to kind of encourage certain genes to be expressed and certain genes to be silent. So right, it's like turning an on and off switch. So I know there are a lot of studies when it comes to those things now, but we're still in the infancy, I think, of that. And so we don't, it's not really a disease that can be cured. Mm-hmm. It's just a condition. It's not a disease. Correct, yeah. correct. All right, so I guess that's all for today. Do you have any projects that you would like to share with our listeners? Or I know you do workshops. So please invite our listeners to your workshop. Yes. So on Instagram, I'm aromatherapy underscore ph. So that's my Instagram handle. And then every week I do different workshops. On Saturday at 8 p.m., I have a... An open models workshop so if you can register before Friday that's going to be really good and you, if you live in Metro Manila um, because I sent out free samples um, and then during the class we go through them together so that parang you understand what I'm talking about because it's really hard to talk about aromatherapy with people not smelling yeah without it. smelling it um, and then on Sunday yeah, <laughs> at Sunday at 11 a.m. I have um, a session for pregnancy, labor, and the postpartum period. And then at 2 p.m., a session for the use of essential oils on children with a special area for touch therapy. So we teach you how you can use the oils in massage for young children, but at the same time incorporate them into story time, into singing, and so on. Because, you know, the children, they need some form of sanity they need to regain their sanity too i think the children are the most badly affected by this whole you know restriction of movement situation that we have so yeah that might be helpful for the parents <laughs> Oh, nga. Please check out Noelle's Instagram to check out all her updated schedules and her workshops. Ito, last na. Before we end the session, what's your top three essential oils that you would recommend at this time? Oh, dear Lord. That is so hard. <laughs> so, okay. Something that never leaves me is actually a blend that's been recently launched in the Philippines. It's been in the U.S. for a for a while now, for over a year. It's called Adaptive. It was especially uh, formulated blend for calming and for anxiety. So it's been a lifesaver for me. So that's my top one. My second one is frankincense, of course, because frankincense, when in doubt, just bring out the frankincense and it's really good for um, immune system support and for a lot of other things. Um, And then the third one is cardamom. So it's my recent favorite. I have been ignoring it for a long time, but I realized that it's so comforting and the sweetness, I love the sweetness. But at the same time, it is also good. It has one eight cineol, so it's great for respiratory support. But it's not as in your face as the other, like eucalyptus. Or it, rosemary. Oh, or rosemary. Rosemary is para okay. You smell like chicken now, right? But with a, with a cardamom, para swabbing, swabbing. And so I've been obsessed with it for the past few months now. Yeah. Galeng, <laughs> cardamom is actually a very unique pick. I haven't like heard about that from other people. Ako, I personally don't like the smell <laughs> of cardamom. Yeah. Sabi ko nga, 
Siguro kasi dati ako manginginom at when people use cardamom seeds in gin. <laughs> Makakaya I like pink pepper, I like cardamom kasi in my youth I used to, you know, like have a great time. Pwede. So, <laughs> takes you back talaga. No? Oo. <laughs> Thank you so much again, Noel, for your time. Super thank you for guesting in our episode today. Thanks for inviting me, Herbie. And always keep safe. Yes, you too. Take care. Bye. Bye. All right, that's all for today's episode of Live Well with Aromatherapist Derby Go. For more information and updates, don't forget to follow me on my Instagram. That's at happyoilerph. Don't forget to follow Noel and check out her schedule. And I'll see you on my next Live Well with Aromatherapist Kirby Cole.